Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to explain why I think Palantir today is like Microsoft in 1993. And this is a comment that I've made on X a number of times and I felt like it was about time that I did a long form piece explaining just why I think this. So let's get deep into it. Microsoft's success as I covered in my deep dive of the company over the past few decades has been the result of dominating at the operating system level and then leveraging said dominance to build an ecosystem of solutions stemming from it. The latter has not only enabled Microsoft, so the ecosystem of solutions, to multiply its operating leverage, but also fortify its moat at the operating system level. This dynamic, with its ups and downs along the way, has seen Microsoft's market cap go from $777 million at IPO to $3.21 trillion to date, and that's an incredible 4,168x return. While the market is enthused with Palantir's rising operating margins and many discussions whether the company is overvalued or not, I remain focused on the deeper fundamentals. Palantir is doing exactly what Microsoft has done over the past few decades, but in technical terms at a lower level. Indeed, Microsoft owns the operating system of the machines people use to do work, but Palantir now owns the operating system that runs the entire enterprise. So it's the same playbook, but just way more important. The enterprise stack, as depicted above, simply aggregates the data that employees generate via their personal computing devices, so the computers, the smartphones, and so forth, and returns outputs in the form of insights that unlock value. Previously, the layer in between computing devices and hardware was occupied by disparate softwares that essentially attempted to do what digital twins do today, which is make sense out of the vast amount of data silos within the enterprise. With the advent of AI, digital twins are now an essential component of the enterprise stack, and Palantir happens to be the world's leading provider. Until recently, Palantir was was a notable but rather clunky SaaS software as a service provider with relatively high deployment costs and long sales cycles. Thanks to their AIP initiative, Artificial Intelligence Platform, deployment times and costs are rapidly collapsing with sales cycles shrinking accordingly. This is ultimately driving the aforementioned increase in operating margins, which is driving the stock up present, but more importantly, is fundamentally productizing the offerings to the point where they are becoming a platform. The above means that Palantir's offerings are becoming gradually more affordable and feasible for small and medium enterprises. As a result, Palantir's commercial use US business is growing at lightning speed, as you can see in the graph below, with quarterly revenue up 54% year over year. Therefore, while Microsoft continues to diversify its efforts across a broad range of applications within and around its higher level operating system, Palantir is positioning itself to become the leading enterprise digital twin and thus the bedrock of the enterprise stack. I say that digital twins are now the bedrock of the stack because they're the only way we can deploy AI across the enterprise and make money. Companies are essentially optimization functions in that their primary goal is to minimize inputs and maximize outputs per share for as long as possible. To do this, humankind has traditionally processed information manually and missed out on incalculable volume of insights. With AI, however, we can just plug data into it and automate much of the work, so long as we have a truly functional digital twin. Further, large language models have given rise to generative search methods, which are superior to traditional retrieval methods in that they increase the efficiency with which the enterprise stack converts inputs into insights. So retrieval methods would be something like looking for something manually in a computer and a generative search method would be something like asking chat GPT directly for an answer. I believe that at some point in the coming decade, generative methods will be as indispensable as electricity is at present. And this will by itself funnel tremendous wealth to the primary provider of digital twins. More importantly, at that point, however, business applications like Microsoft Word and Excel will still be important, but only if they integrate with an ontology. Without it, they're like the printing press, they'll be outdated. With it, they empower each employee even more than at present. Beyond this point, business applications without an ontology become increasingly irrelevant in a competitive context, placing Palantir at the top of the enterprise funnel. In such a scenario, Palantir's operating system would come to subjugate Microsoft's operating system. My experience is that when everyone is enthused with a given growth stock, it's likely that it will soon drop over 50% or something like that for no reason, such as the natural rhythm of the market. However, so long as the underlying company continues to evolve well, fundamentally speaking, holding onto the stock 
tends to pay off over the long term. The productization of Palantir's offerings is not only paving the way for the scenario that I describe above, but also for Palantir to evolve into a network of ontologies, which I've explained before. Said development can, over the long term, increase Palantir's market capitalization by orders of magnitude from here, even if it goes up or down 50% randomly in a given year. As Palantir continues to productize its offerings, it gains more customers per industry. This then positions Palantir to evolve from a provider of digital twins to a network that connects digital twins and facilitates interactions between players within and across industries. If indeed Palantir does achieve dominance in the enterprise stack as I hypothesized, this is the path for the company to exponentiate its operating leverage and make far more money per digital twin deployed than at present. The above would be the equivalent to Microsoft launching its Office software products, for example, leveraging its until now ever-growing operating system installed base. While this future is far ahead, the odds of the above happening are meaningful so long as Palantir's culture remains top-notch. In my studies of long-term winners and in my personal experience picking winners such as Spotify and um, AMD, Tesla and Palantir right now, I have found that financials tend to track culture over the long term. We will see this once more in depth in my upcoming Costco deep dive which I am currently working on and will be releasing soon. So thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed it, could you please share it with one friend whom you think will enjoy it. These deep dives are for free and so the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in advance and until next time, take care.